neighbors, a few days ago, I was in Myeongdong. I had to run an errand. And oh my gosh, I don't like going to Myeongdong. There's just way too many people there. That's like a tourist hotspot. I don't know how everyone ends up getting a hotel at Myeongdong. I was ducking and bobbing, you know, the hands of tourists. I cut across one alley and I came across the shop that was doing Alkun grilled bulgogi. And it looks so good. One taste of it and I was like mind blown. Later in this recipe, we're gonna boil that marinade and we need some liquid. So if we can, why not create some broth so we get that layered flavor? You wanna eat a whole bite of the cake, not just the frosting, right? So two options here. A, use one of those anchovy kelp broth bags and make one and a half cups of broth. Or two, the simpler one, you can just throw in some dashima into some warm water. All right, one and a half cups of warm water. For a lot of our newer neighbors, this is what we call dashima, or also known as kombu. And as this piece of seaweed dries, it releases its salt, which we call umami. And I personally like to buy the ones that are already cut up, much easier to handle than like a huge piece, which you have to use a pair of scissors. iPhone size piece in, more or less, and we'll let this hydrate while we work on the other ingredients. Again, you can just use anchovy kelp broth if you don't have these separate kombu pieces in your refrigerator. All right, and now for the saucy sauce, we'll start off with one and a half tablespoons of gochikaru. And by the way, guys, when it comes to gochikaru, there's different levels of spice. For our recipes, we're always using the normal spicy level. Sometimes they have like extra spicy level, and at that point, it's no longer cooking. It's Let's do one tablespoon of soup soy sauce. Yes, you can just use regular soy sauce if you don't got the soup. Two cloves of garlic or roughly half a tablespoon of minced garlic. By the way, I love this sound. Something very satisfying about that. A tablespoon of that wonderful gochujang. And then remember our meshil, which is the Korean plum extract. This is gonna provide some sweetness and a little bit of tartness at the same time. Let's do two tablespoons of this. And then we're gonna use some of our denjang. All right, looking nice and rusty. <laughs> Half a tablespoon of this. If you look at all this, I mean, this is what Korea is right here. Denjang, gochujang, garlic, soy sauce, gochikaru. I mean, <laughs> that's your Korean pantry in one dish. Then one tablespoon of sesame oil. Round out all these flavors. Few cracks of black pepper. Yeah, yeah. Make the north and south come together. Like I always say, taste your food as you go. Wow. We're gonna basically add this sauce to our dashima water a little bit later. So let's set this to the side. And next we're gonna use some thin cuts of beef. Any Asian Mart, you'll find this. Now mine has been sitting out for a little bit because I had to go back to the market. I forgot onions. And just like the tofu video, if you just get a paper towel and just pat it down, you can get a little bit of the excess liquid or blood that might be on these pieces. Some of these pieces are big, so I'm gonna just cut them into bite-sized pieces or you could just rip some up with your hands. It makes for a more rustic look. Now, if we cook the meat straight like this, it's gonna taste a little bit tough. We need to tenderize it. Put in about a half tablespoon, just a little bit of sugar, and this will tenderize it. I like to just mix this in first, just a little bit with your hands. And right now I'm looking at my camera and then it just looks like roast beef. It's making me think of Arby's. Remember those like 2.99 for two? Or was it 3.99? Delicious. All right, then let's do about one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce. And then finally, one tablespoon of mirim or cooking wine. Just put that in. We'll give it one final toss and we'll set it aside. And one thing that I really enjoyed about this dish were these king oyster mushrooms. At the restaurant, they had cut very thin sections of this. And when you stir fry it with the meat, it turns into little wrappers. You can pick it up, wrap a beef around it. Ooh. Okay, okay. We go like this. Oh no. Bad then. Oh no, I did it again. Terrible, what's going on? Maybe I'm doing too thin. What is, all right, and then we have inaki mushrooms. That's the Japanese name in Korean. It's called pengi baza. Just cut off the stem part. I think we'll only use half the bag. Be a gentleman here, hold it like a bouquet, and then give it a nice wash. Don't let go. Form size piece of spring onion. Ah, and I almost forgot the reason why I had to go back to the market. We, we need an onion. <laughs> Yeah, we we'll only need half of this. Thin pieces. All right, guys, one last thing. Let's fish out these dashima pieces. You know when you chop an aloe vera plant and it gets all mucusy like that? That's what it's released into the water. 
And that, my friends, is what's going to combine all of that flavor together. If you taste this water, it tastes like nothing. And that's exactly why those dashma pieces, they're included in those anchovy kelp broth bags. Or anytime we make stock broth in Korea. A little bit of vegetable oil. By the way, in Korea, we typically use soybean oil. We rarely use olive oil because uh, the oil tastes too strong and then it kind of imparts its flavor onto the ingredients. Fry them up. Wow. All right, move them around. Kind of try to open them up as best as you can. At the same time, let's add in our onions. This is going to add some moisture. And after most of the red is gone, time for our sauce. Our saucy sauce. Oh, I love it when it comes out this... All right, let's get that entire Korean pantry of flavors mixed into this meat here. This is where that flavoring happens. Let's stir fry it around for 30 seconds. That way that heat kind of mellows out all of the ingredients that we put in that marinade sauce. All right, and then let's put in that, that aloe vera. And now that we have liquid, we're gonna add in our inaki mushrooms and then our oyster mushrooms. And then from up high, bless it with those spring onions. And that's it. We're going to let this boil away until most of that broth is gone. It's going to go into the mushrooms, into the beef. It's been around 15 minutes and you can see that the mushrooms have turned very soft now. The onions are transparent. Like look at this little one. But I still want to get rid of more of this broth. It's going to be even better flavor. So maybe about five to seven more minutes. All right. And if you're doing this at home, I hope you were patient. If we separate the Red Sea, uh, it's not ready for Moses yet. Let's give it one more minute. Oh, we're part of the sea. This is good. <laughs> exactly where we want it. We'll turn off the heat. And oh my God. It's almost like a curry. We're going to slide this baby out. All right. And there it is, my friends. Of course, make some rice on the side. Take a perill leaf or any leafy lettuce. Remember, I told you treat this like a wrap. Get it around a piece of bulgogi. Put it right on top. Maybe a little bit of the onions, the naki mushrooms. Wrap it up. Amazing. Or you could try the bulgogi by itself. Actually, I think this meat would work really well in a burrito. You put a little bit of that cilantro rice, put a layer of this, slice it down the middle with a little bit of guacamole on top. Oh.